Although the diseases caused by mycobacterium have been known for centuries, the pathogen had only been discovered in the 1880s. As we will see, even today, the microbe doesn't always behave. For instance, it would be nice if we could simply culture M. tuberculosis like many other bacteria, then stain it with the typical gram stain. It's just not that cooperative. Get ready, this is going to be a long section. Luckily, we do have the acid fast stain that can help. This stain goes for the mycolic acids found in mycobacterium, which is very fatty. In comparison, gram stain dyes peptidoglycans, which are mostly proteins and sugars. There is also a way to culture mycobacterium with the Lowenstein Jensen agar. However, even when successful, this culture can take weeks. You wouldn't want to release an infected individual to spread TB for weeks to months while you await their test results. It is also possible to visualize the microbe with the fluorescent aramine rhodamine stain. It is said to be more sensitive than acid fast stains, but acid fast is still used to confirm and seen much more commonly on test questions. For respiratory diseases, a sputum culture times 3 might be taken in order to better assure a proper sample was collected, and a lumbar puncture times 3 may assist in diagnosing miliary TB. However, the most important factor in testing within developed nations is a PPD and chest x-ray. The PPD, or purified protein derivative, is what it sounds like. Non-active proteins are synthesized from TB and are injected under the skin. If it reacts, this means that you have an immune activation to the bacteria. The most common way for this reaction to occur is if your body was previously exposed. So if you've ever been exposed to TB in the past, this will read positive for the rest of your life. So how can we determine if there's an active infection? This is where the chest x-ray comes in. If active, the lungs would be involved and could even display cavitations within the lungs. If no active TB is seen on x-ray, you would still need to be treated. However, treatment for latent TB is much nicer than for active TB. That will be discussed more in the next tier. There are tons of factoids and buzzwords that test writers like to use when discussing this disease. There are also many clinically relevant factors to discuss. Let's sum up some of the more important ones. For one, this bug creates a special type of necrosis. Though other diseases may form a liquefactive necrosis or a coagulative necrosis or even one of the less common forms, TB is one of the few that causes caseating necrosis. Some forms of fungus can cause caseating necrosis, but they are much less common than TB. And though the syphilitic guma is occasionally referred to as causing caseating necrosis, the guma is a pretty rare presentation in this day and age. Many people in developed nations are also not aware that there is a vaccine for TB, the BCG vaccine. Why then is this such a plague on the world, you ask? Well, in simple terms, it's just not that effective. According to the WHO, it prevents against meningitis and miliary TB, but does not prevent against primary infection. Also, if you ever get the vaccine, every PPD taken after will show positive, requiring the individual to get an x-ray of the chest every time. The size of these microbes are about 2 to 4 micrometers in size. Though not the smallest bacterium, and not nearly as small as viruses, that's pretty small. The size may play a role in why this bug can linger in the air for hours after being breathed, coughed, or sneezed out by an infected individual. There are just a few more factors to cover, so hold on just a little bit longer. Because it is an aerobic bacteria, it also prefers the apex of the lungs. There's an interesting path where the primary infection is stated to occur in the upper part of the lower lobes initially. However, the bacteria makes its way up to the apex of the lungs, where it forms greater granulomatous destruction and begins secondary TB. Cord factor is a virulence factor in TB responsible for the severe lung presentations. It destroys the lung tissue and recruits lipids to the region. The bacteria and lipids then form this waxy bacterial culture within the destroyed lung tissue. The host body macrophage attempt to expel the pathogen, but are unable to break through this. They then sit around the outside, trying to break down the doors of this fortified bacterial wall. This spherical granuloma is called a gone complex, and is one thing that we are looking for on a chest x-ray for primary TB. Phew, okay. Now that we are done with TB, it's time to take a quick look at the rest. There is much less to point out about the other mycobacterium species. Though unique in their own right, very few topics are readily testable or clinically significant. 
MLEPRE has its own form of a PPD, similar to the one used in TB. The Leproman skin test takes some of the deactivated bacteria and injects it under the skin. This method is used to determine between the two types of leprosy. Tuberculoid, which is relatively mild and leaves the immune system intact, will show positive. However, those with lepromatous will be Leproman negative. This is thought to be due to the T helper 2 cell type, which doesn't readily activate cell mediated immunity. More on this can be discussed in the immunity section, but in simplest forms, T helper 1 cells activate other T cells, and T helper 2 cells activate B cells and antibody responses. T cells, not antibodies, react to the Leprimin skin test. Though fun testing fodder, the Leprimin test isn't recommended by the World Health Organization which suggests that a diagnosis be made by clinical diagnosis. The CDC recommends biopsying the infected area, such as a lesion. This could be difficult in the more mild tuberculoid variation, which often doesn't present with many lesions. Also, stay away from armadillos, as they can carry the disease. There are several cases associated with armadillos in Florida each year, as well as a few other southern states. The NTM group is even simpler. This will be faster than the miscellaneous group of enteric rods back in Module 5. Similar to TB, the MAC group is primarily associated with respiratory concerns. A chest x-ray or CT if needed can help to visualize any lung deformities that may hint at this pathogen. Also like TB, three sputum cultures might be taken to try to collect enough sample for diagnosis. A tissue or bone marrow biopsy is possible, but rarely used. The lung disease can predispose an individual to respiratory pathogens, including TB, there is a much higher incidence rate for MAC in those with lung disease. COPD or bronchiectasis, for instance, is more likely to support MAC over a TB infection. The one line to remember about the other NTM bacterium are that Amerinum is sometimes thrown in with fish tank questions, and Kansasii with hot tubs. These are very nonspecific findings, and many of these mycobacterium species, as well as other microbes, live in these environments. That's all we have for you in this tier. As you can see, TB is the main area of concern. We could actually go for much longer in order to cover all of the intricacies and testable facts on this one. But to be kind, we'll keep this video short. Do check out our supplemental resources in the course pages of this module for further information and stay tuned for our last tier in this module.